Having been captured by the Separatists on Geonosis, Obi-Wan was approached by the fallen Jedi Master turned Sith Lord Count Dooku with an offer. Focusing on their connection through Qui-Gon Jinn, who was Dooku's Padawan and Obi-Wan's master, Dooku explained that the Republic was under the control of a Dark Lord of the Sith. Although Obi-Wan refused to believe Dooku's revelations, Dooku was completely forthcoming in explaining that hundreds of Republic senators were under the control of a Sith named Darth Sidious. Dooku then offered Obi-Wan to join him so that they could both destroy the Sith, an offer that Obi-Wan declined and rejected. But Geonosis was not the only time that Dooku tried to save Obi-Wan's life and spare him from the fate that would befall every Jedi within the Order through the actions carried out by Order 66. However, while Dooku's initial attempt came just prior to the First Battle of Geonosis and the start of the war, Dooku's second attempt came at the war's end, during the important Battle of Coruscant. In this video expose, I will explain how Dooku tried to save Obi-Wan from Order 66 by having him join the Sith a second time, and the reason behind Dooku's sentimentality for the Jedi Master. With Palpatine secured aboard the Invisible Hand in furtherance of the Dark Lord's plans, and in watching the Jedi Anakin and Obi-Wan approach to attempt to rescue the Supreme Chancellor, Dooku allowed himself an opportunity to envision the coming Empire that would come to replace the Republic. Having forever been focused on the political ends that he sought, that were born out of the hatred of everything the Republic stood for, Dooku looked fondly upon the coming government that would be clean, pure, and direct, thereby eliminating the need to garner the favor of the corrupt individuals within the Senate. For Dooku, the Empire was to be one of authority, and not one composed of what the Sith Lords saw as the ignorant rabble. As Dooku further conceptualized the new coming order, he recognized the need for a Sith army that would fulfill the necessary ends of the new government. This army of Force users was a necessary component for the Empire, as they would serve as the arm of the government that would bring true authority and peace to the galaxy and enforce the commands of the Empire, thereby eliminating any requirements of negotiation and mediation. The Sith army was just as necessary for the new order that would emerge as the replacement of the Senate. As Dooku watched Obi-Wan make his way closer to the Chancellor with Anakin, amazingly, he turned to Sidious and suggested that they give Obi-Wan another chance to join them. Dooku's initial reasoning was merely practical, in terms of his previous visions of the new government and its Sith army. He justified allowing Obi-Wan to live by explaining that having a Jedi of his integrity and reputation would go a long way in establishing the new Empire's political legitimacy. To say the least, Sidious was not convinced, and questioned why Dooku was so interested in Obi-Wan. Dooku explained that in many ways, with Obi-Wan being the Padawan of his own Padawan Qui-Gon, the Jedi was practically like a grandson to him. With that, Dooku revealed that there was a significant amount of sentimentality that existed within his justification for trying to save Obi-Wan, sentimentality for Qui-Gon more than anything. Recognizing this, Sidious quickly rejected Dooku's suggestion that they give Obi-Wan a chance to join them, explaining that he was too old and far too indoctrinated by the teachings of the Jedi. Moreover, They'd already tested Obi-Wan on Geonosis at the start of the war, and it was concluded then that the Jedi Master would not be fit to join them given his convictions. Dooku ultimately allowed the suggestion to die there, recognizing that Obi-Wan was too indoctrinated by the ideals of the Jedi Order. And more importantly, Obi-Wan needed to die at the hands of Dooku to fulfill Sidious's further goal of pushing Anakin to the dark side, where he would then join them and the new government. Dooku recognized that within Sidious's greater plan for the Sith and the Empire, Anakin was the more valuable Jedi to bring into their new government. As Sidious explained to Dooku, Anakin would be pushed to the dark side through Obi-Wan's death. He would then play his role within the stage capture of Dooku, thereby making Anakin a hero who could then lend the new government the legitimacy it needed by denouncing the corruption occurring within the Senate and the Jedi Order, which was resulting in a prolonging of the Clone War. 
Therefore, Dooku saw that their new government would have all of the legitimacy it would need through the heroism of Anakin and his denouncing of the Republic, and Obi-Wan would not be required. With that, Dooku accepted the fate of Obi-Wan and let go of the sentimentality he had for him through his Padawan Qui-Gon. So there we have it! How Dooku tried to save Obi-Wan from Order 66 for the second time. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For sentimentality!